Hey, everybody, this is Birch. Um, I want to, you know, I've done videos before where we've talked about uh, creators who have passed and they tend to take on a somber tone. Um, and this one, I want to try a little bit of a different tone. I may not achieve it, um, but I want to take on more of a celebration tone because the guy deserves it. So um, we, we learned about the untimely and, um, and sad passing of Mark Bright. Now, Mark Bright uh, is, a, is a comic artist. Um, he did a lot of work outside of comics. We'll talk about it in a minute. Um, but he is one of my favorite artists. And he's also one that if you've been listening to the channel for a long time, you notice I don't mention. I, I, you probably haven't heard that name come up before. And I, I don't have any excuse for that um, beyond what I think we're going to talk through over the few, next few minutes. Uh, but it's a huge oversight because he's legitimately one of my favorite artists. He may be, if you've been collecting comics for any length of time, one of your favorite artists as well. You just might not realize it because Mark Bright did not get the benefit that uh, a Jim Lee or a Todd McFarlane or a John Byrne got, uh, which was a lot of hype and, and promotion around you know their name and their appearance. Um, but Mark Bright did a lot of things. There's a, uh, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. There's a uh, Transformers cover where it says the Transformers were all dead. Um, I say it's Shockwave right on the on the cover. Um, I, I know my Transformers, but it's early in the morning, so I'm I'm blanking on. But I believe it's Shockwave there. And it's a killer cover. He did G.I. Joe work that was my favorite G.I. Joe work by a mile. And I'm a big, you know, Zach fan. And still, Mark Bright, beautiful. His work on Iron Man and Green Lantern, um, probably some of the best uh, Iron Man and Green Lantern art we, you could get for those characters. I mean, it is it is legendary work. Um, but, you know, he his name was not out there. He did not get the same kind of hype as, as others. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a big miss, uh, because he did want a lot of work. Um, I'm sure somebody could come out of the woodwork, uh, who worked in comics and tell me this is wrong, but, uh, I, I've, I've talked with a lot of people and I just have ordered a lot of comics and, uh, one guy who I never remember there being a delay on or a late issue or any of that stuff is Mark Bright. His stuff was on time. And the quality was stellar. Um, so I, I think he's he's pretty incredible. And I want to just go into him a little bit more. I want to also kind of tease out why. Why wasn't he more known? Why 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 did not more people not have him in their uh, their list of you know greatest creators of all time? Because he's he is. Um, so so let's let's talk about that. So a little bit about Mark Bright. If you haven't, again, if the name doesn't ring a bell, um, chances are you're newer to comics, and that's okay. Um, but if you go back and look at the covers immediately, you're going to go, ah, you know, it's, it's there. The cover, by the way, the, the Transformers number five, I remember that much. And it was this painted cover and it's probably, I, I would argue one of the best covers, definitely one of the best Transformers covers and probably one of the best covers, uh, of all time. It's just a killer, um, a cover. Um, a lot of people know him from Armor Wars. He did the art for a lot of that. Um, and then Emerald Dawn uh, for Green Lantern. Those are probably things that were the the highest profile. But if you were a child or a you know a kid in the uh, I guess it was the same thing in the '80s and you bought GI Joe, you you know this guy. And for me personally, when I would pick up uh, a comic and then I would see he was in it, I would see his name there. I just smiled because I knew I was in for a good comic. The characters were really good. Like the, the characters seemed more lifelike, more lively. They would pop off the page, the, uh, the background. I mean, it was just, it was a, it, it just, the, the comic had a vibrancy. And it's one of the reasons why I like John Byrne. John Byrne's art, uh, the characters looked more dynamic, more alive. Um, uh, Mark Bright, it's the same thing. They just, the, the comics were bigger than life. And so I was always pleased to see it. But I remember even, you know, uh, just kind of teenager and people looking at comics. Um, I remember thinking every time I'd see that, I'd always be reminded. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I love Mark Bright. I had a similar feeling, by the way, for Ron Lim, where I, I always liked that artwork. But I don't remember going to the shop or buying comics like, I wonder what Mark Bright's on today. I, I don't I remember saying, I wonder what Todd McFarlane is doing. But I didn't, I didn't associate that with, um, with Bright or Lim. 
And by the way, because there's all the elephant in the room there is, um, you know, oh, well, Todd McFarlane's a white guy. Mark Bright is black. That's racism. That's, that's, it's 2024, so of course that has to be the answer to everything. But here's the thing. Uh, by and large, the comic artists you, you rarely saw. You, didn't, you, you had no idea. And I'll tell you, full stop, um, I remember uh, going to conventions and meeting some of these creators for the first time and going, holy shit, this guy's you know, black, this guy's Asian, this guy is white. I, I mean, you, just, you, you didn't think about it. You didn't know. When you were buying comics during this time period, you didn't have Twitter. You didn't have, I mean, this is a large time pre-Wizard. You didn't have hype around the face of these creators. So you knew them by their art. That, you know, that part was invisible to you. Quite frankly, that was kind of nice as a reader. It just, it, I don't know. I, I take it back. Um, I like these guys to be able to get up on a stage and take a bow. And they should because they do great work. Uh, what I don't like about 2024 is it suddenly... We have to think about that before we think about the art. That's the part I hate. Um, but anyway, no, it's, it, there's nothing. There's no racism about it. It's just that when it came time, and this is kind of one of the bigger points I want to make, or at least, you know, this is my theory, and I'd love to hear yours. Um, for whatever reason, could be lots, so we could speculate on it. Mark Bright, a guy who worked, you know, day in, day out, making comics and, and, and doing great artwork, um, did not get the hype from the publisher or from the news may or, you know, comic news weekly or, or eventually wizard or any of these, um, they, they didn't get the promotion that they suddenly jumped on with, you know, the you know, early nineties, suddenly we're going to make superstars out of, you know, Todd, Mark, Jim, Eric, uh, Rob and, uh, Jim Valentino even. Um, and you, you didn't, you didn't get that same kind of push for this creator even though they did amazing work um and and to be fair you know i don't i'm not suggesting that oh wizard was a bunch of racists that's why i'm not suggesting that um i think you know mark's time as a creator probably proceed you know he he was uh, not on the way out but i mean his his high star profile was uh just dropping you know, because, you know, Wizard and those guys, they had no problem promoting like George Perez and other things. So I don't think it's a racism issue. I think it's a timing issue. Um, but it, it today, to this day, Mark Bright was a fucking incredible comic artist and still not a household name. And I think one of the great things about comics, you know, we can, it is a tragedy that he's gone. But uh, one of the great things about comics is we get, a, we get a look at back issues and we get a look at those reprints and trades and other things. And we get to experience his artwork for the first time, if you've never read it, or be reminded of how amazing it is. Uh, so, you know, you can go to a shop, you can pick up Armor Wars, you can look at some of this stuff, you can look at some of the G.I. Joe uh, comics back in the day, harder to get your hands on. You can look at Emerald Dawn. And you can experience this all over again. And more, by the way. Um, you know, I think more recently... Uh, people know him for the Quantum and Woody uh, series. Um, he did some stuff for Milestone. I, I think there was a couple different pieces. Um, I loved his old, um, his, I mean, just when he would just do drop in and do kind of, you know, off issues of things. It was always great. Um, he did Icon. Um, he did that uh, Hawkeye Solo Adventures series. He did a couple things in Solo Adventures um, that was just a lot of fun. Um, but he... He is an, again, a, an amazing artist, very imaginative, descriptive what he does. And for all of us now, um, if you're, if you're wanting to, if I, you know, all the time, I have people in my comments talking about how comics suck and where are the good comics? Well, there's a bunch of suggestions right there. How about you go pick up Armor Wars? How about you pick up Emerald Dawn? How about you pick up, you know, some of these other series if you've got a Marvel Infinite subscription or you've got your hands on some digital comics, I won't ask how, um, check out that Solo Avenger series where, you know, he, Hawkeye's got an adventure. It's, it's good stuff. So you want good comics? You say you want it? Great. There's some great ones uh, by some great writers, but also an incredible artist that maybe you haven't really spent a lot of time with. Maybe you don't know as a household name. I would love it if that changed. Uh, because he he was a great part of comics. 
By the way, if you're writing something in the comments, it's like, yeah, I know who Mark Wright is. Who are these dumbasses who don't? Um, you're kind of missing the point. The, the goal is not to, you know, insult or slam a people who may or may not know his name or, or do anything negative with it. It's to say, and hopefully everybody agree, when you talk about the greatest artists of all time, you will get, you know, Jim Lee thrown out there. You'll get Todd thrown out there. You will get, depending on the age, you get a George Perez, Frank Miller. You'll get um, John Byrne. You'll get Jack Kirby. Well, you know, Mark Bright deserves to be on that list by a mile. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly kind of curious. I guess it's a little bit of a question for all of you. Why? 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 How did he get missed? The, the, the reason I hinted that earlier was just that the publisher did not promote him. There's a time period where he had a lot of really great creators who were doing amazing work and they were kind of falling under the radar. You, you might argue John Romita Jr., who now is being promoted. I mean, he's doing you know active work on Spider-Man and he did the work with Bendis on Superman and everything else. Now they're putting his name out there. But um, I would argue the the time when he was the best, you know, his Daredevil work, when he was doing uh, Uncanny X-Men uh, the way back in the day during the Mutant Massacre time and everything else, that was um, that was the 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 pinnacle of his work, and and he was not he his name was was not nearly as out there as other creators. But why why who who picks and chooses this? It seems very arbitrary. Um, but anyway. I, I said I'd mention it, you know, he did go and do storyboards. Um, unfortunately, the storyboards he worked on um, wasn't exactly the best project. He did uh, Last Airbender, the Shyamalan version, which is uh, not not super. Um, but, uh, and some other, he did certainly some other work. Um, but he is an incredible artist. Again, people tell me all the time, you know, where are the good comics? I want to see a good comic. You know, like, there's nothing to read. Well... There's a good hundred issues out there that have Mark Bright's name on it. And you want a damn good artist you can look at. Uh, you want some comics that, that flow real well. A lot of those comics, like I said, I'm, I'm praising the artist because this moment is about Bright. But there's some pretty damn good writers on those as well. And uh, go go find them. Go check them out. They're, it's it's great work. And um, and I'm going to miss him. I, I, I mean, he's he's been out of the business for a while. Um, died at the age of 68. Um, uh, just, just a few days ago and, um, you know, the end of the, the art world of comics is, a, is poorer, uh, as a result of his passing. So we'll miss you, Mark. And, uh, for my purpose, I just need to remember to put his name in my mouth. <laughs> Some more positive way there. Um, uh, when we're talking about some of those legendary artists, you know, I talk about Walt Simonson a lot and deserved Walt is uh, incredible talent. Um, Mark Bright, incredible talent. So hats off to you, man. Thanks for listening.